The low tutti in the Shostakovich Fifth Symphony is an excerpt that you will see on almost every single audition. I'm not sure why. As a horn player, you know there's going to be four or five people playing it. But it's important because it shows a lot of different aspects of playing the horn. One, you have a low range. Well, most people have a low range. It may not be the most powerful low range if you're a first horn player, but you have to have a low range that you can sustain through. You have the same colors. That's the main thing that I think people don't aren't listening for is what color is happening. Where, where does the shift come? Because usually it's during an amateur shift of the low range into the higher range. Because this, this actually covers three octaves of the horn. It's loud, but it doesn't need to be triple forte because you have five people playing. And as a section, I think it's important to know that if you played just a nice full sound, it's going to blend. And as a person that's listened to people on auditions, when they're coming in and they're just playing, overplaying it, it's not their best sound. So keep in mind that, yes, it's forte. Yes, it's low. But play your best forte, not somebody else's best forte. The intonation is a little wonky on this because it's so it's such a huge range and articulation. For me, I think of steel gray for this. It's not happy. Shostakovich was not happy when he was writing this piece. It was a very difficult time in his life. You can hear that angst. You can kind of see the people marching, you know. And so I think you have to have a visual tool of, in your mind, what you're going to try to uh, give to the audience or the uh, people that are listening to you. The intonation, of course, it's the three T's again, intonation, tone, and time. It's pretty important that you have a little cellarondo, and you probably need to show enough that's, that you're actually doing it in cellarondo instead of, oh, you're just getting a little rushy. And then at the very end, of course, you have a great big part that's very screaming and it's louder and it's higher. And, and I think that's really important to be able to blow through. Something that I feel is important in this is something that I haven't said anything about yet. The musical shape. Because we're all worried about playing low and playing loud and playing in tune. But there is a musical line in this piece. And when I was studying with Mr. Jacobs, he helped me so much because he made me play it an octave higher and soft and find the musical shape in this. So if you start, you'll find that you can, oh, maybe I need to shape it a little bit more toward such and such a note. And you can find what you want to do with it if you just back off. And then start putting some flutter to it so you find what your air is doing. So you end up probably going to that D flat more than you thought you were going to go to the low C when you're playing it higher. So then you start playing it down in the register, but maybe you start playing connecting the notes that way through the quarters. And then pretty soon you can start dropping out the quarters and just do halves, and then you'll find you have a little bit longer line and it's all connected. I feel like this one, many times people will play. And change their embouchure all over and it's not really that different. It's pretty close. So to keep it uniform, and connected, I think that's where you get the idea of uh, blowing through a little bit more and find musical shape. And no matter what you're playing, it always has to have the music in there with the three T's. So now you get to maybe some C words in this one. Color, contrast, because you go from to so a little bit less sound, and then you have to go really high in, in much more dynamic contrast. So you have contrast. That's a nice C word. And color. Oh, the character. Is it happy? Is it kind of 
Mm, angst. I always say, you know, you can march. And you're going through some muck and and have it connect and not have a great big chopped. So that's a very short version of how to practice. So what do you do when you want to practice Shostakovich? Hmm. Let's get out some low etudes. Or you could take one of your Koprash books and take it down the octave. So you learn how to play low through an etude book and then you apply it to the Shostakovich. Yeah, I think that's really very important because I think we get too caught up in displaying this excerpt and not really figuring out how to play low.